Hello, my name is Chris Hoffman and I'm going to take you through a 5-step After Effects tutorial on creative and quite drastic colour adjustments done with a combination of effects, primarily the channel mixer. We're going to be using uh, this footage, which is from a stop, main, stop frame animation I shot in 2011 for Granta publication. And um, the challenge was to um, basically switch colours between the toys. So we want to um, turn the girls' toys, which were initially pink, into blue and uh, vice versa. So in the last tutorial I did, I already uh, gone through separating the objects from the background so you're able to treat them individually. So this time I've already prepared the footage and uh, composition with the same technique as last time and split um, our footage into the background and into the pink toys and into the blue toys. So this is all done already, so let's start. The first step, um, we're going to start with the blue toys and the first step is going to be the channel mixer. So uh, we start off with uh, duplicating our blue toys layer, name it tidily, blue toys um, pink. And then we are already uh, ready to apply the channel mixer effect, which is uh, found in the color correction set of effects. And it's here. The channel mixer is a really um, powerful effect that allows you to add a percentage of the input channel, that's always the one here on the right, to the output channel value, which is the one on the left. And those uh, numbers is as, as a certain percentage of the value of the input channel. So, for example, in our case, because we want to um, switch the kind of uh, pink and blue, the red-blue mix is the one of um, most interest. So if we say, turn this up till about 100 and uh, even more, 100 and say 25, you can already see how much we're pushing it towards pink. So basically what it does is we're increasing the value of the red channel for each pixel by 125% of the value of the blue channel. This might be a bit difficult to get your head around at first, so I'm going to give you another quick example before we go back to changing our red and blue toys. So for example, if I would want my train uh, to be uh, more green, I'd say I um, mix the green and blue channels. So for example, I put it to 20 and then till 40. and. Uh, so the more we push every pixel away from blue, our input channel, and towards green, you, you can see how the object changes accordingly. After a while, um, after a short while, you get the hang of this and it becomes a really valuable effect with a lot of different applications. But let's go back to our um, blue and pink uh, mix. So we had um, 125 for the red and blue mix. So we turn that up again. And uh, we're almost here at the pink now. Um, since our object was initially blue, you can see that it has this kind of uh, slight purplish tone to it, which we don't want, since, particularly since the original toys were actually a kind of nude flesh color pink. So we need to turn down the blue. Uh, I'm going to turn down the blue constant to about um, minus 15. Which, um, basically, the, the constant uh, refers to the overall value of that channel in the image and in, e in each pixel. So if I turn it down to uh, minus 15, like I've just done, we'll simply desaturate the blue channel for every pixel. And you can see it's already uh, getting closer. What I'm going to do now, because at the moment it feels that um, the, the color is a little bit uneven, so I'm going to exaggerate the red a little bit and then take that down, the saturation of the red, in a second step. So I'm going to saturate the red by simply turning up the red constant, um, maybe a tiny bit more, say 20. Don't worry about the uh, saturation and the ex brightness now, because that's what we're going to uh, tackle in the next step. Um, our second step is the faithful hue saturation effect, which uh, is as well in the color correction set of tools. And we'll turn down the saturation now that we've um, uh, just increased to about minus uh, 35, I reckon is quite good. 
At the moment our train still feels a little too bright, so we're also going to decrease the master lightness by a notch, not much, minus 8. Leave the uh, hue saturation effect open for a while, we might want to come back to it. But in step 3 we're going to add another really reliable effect, which is the levels. I don't think I've ever worked on a project where I didn't adjust the levels in some way or another. So if we just push the blacks down a little bit, we see how immediately that train starts to sit quite nicely with all our other toys. I think that starts to look pretty good now and I reckon it'd be really hard if you haven't followed our steps now to tell which one was originally the blue toy. In step 4 we're going to add the same um, combination of effects to the pink toys in order to turn them into this very blue. So we're going to start in the same way as we did before by duplicating the pink toys layer, calling them pink toys blue and that's the layer that we're going to work with. I reckon this time round it'd be easier, it's always simpler to darken footage or individual parts of your composition than it is to lighten them without losing the details in the shadows and the mids. So um, this time, instead of doing our big shift with the channel mixer, we're going to reverse the order of the effects that we're going to apply and do our big major change with the hue saturation effect. Um, and let's see how much we have to push this first to uh, get this into a kind of blue area. Um, 150, maybe even minus 160 to get it this kind of turquoise greenish blue. So at the moment it's far too light of course, but um, let's push that only a little bit for now because we can always go back and of course we're going to apply our levels as well this time. Saturation, we're going to push that down till about uh, minus 10 as well. And now we apply the channel mixer again. And this time uh, we're going to want to, we want to push this a little bit more towards a turquoisey color. So we're going to uh, look at the green and red mix. And we're going to increase the green green a little bit and a uh, blue blue okay as well a little bit more even what's really interesting actually now to mention might be that it really matters in what order you apply the effects so for example if i would have uh, done the same uh, channel mix before the hue saturation it has different values to work with and you get a different result so let's get this back it makes a huge difference in what order effects are applied Last but not least, we're going to apply the levels. And uh, let's see, let's push this a little bit, uh, maybe till 5. Um, let's take this down. I reckon that's quite good. And up the lights a little bit. And you can see it actually starts to sit quite nicely with our footage already. So if I play this, I think it starts to look quite good. Let's take our um, layer in and out and see the difference. And I'm pretty satisfied with this. In our fifth and final step, we'll just bring the layers with our different variations in and out and therefore create the impressions that the color change during their motion. So I got all these layers now and um, We'll find a spot where we believe they be uh, a good spot for them to change. So say for example here, I would want to um, bring in my um, pink uh, uh, toys. So I'm bringing in this layer here. Cut it. So you see straight away what happens now if I play it through. It seems to change in its motion. And maybe over here we'll bring our blue toys in. So cut the pink toys blue layer here. And you see you get this uh, nice interplay of the toys seemingly changing color in their motion.